We could use your help fighting the bandits. Balkan. Where's where's this coming from? You want an old man like me to fight? Here, take this potion. Consider that my help in your fight. Potion of cure light wounds. The bandits here bother you as much as Vetlano like. Maybe more. Help us get rid of them for good. Sure. Oh hey, diplomacy check. Bakken scratches his head, then hums to himself and puffs his chest out. Well, all right. I'll show those troublemakers. They'll learn better than to chase an old man around. Someone might even write up some verses about me. Maybe even heroic ones. Cool. Linz gives you a worried glance, then turns to Bakken. Please be careful. Go ahead and help, but leave the heroics to us. You hear? <laughs> Alright, we'll talk later. Cool. Okay, so he's gonna help us. That's cool. Dog. I'm listening. Okay, so we're gonna leave these two by the gates. Anything is possible. I know what to do. Just letting the ink dry. Ready for anything? Let's go explore, I guess. Well, the old well has been renovated and cleaned. It has a new roof. Okay. What do we got up here? Oh. Okay, let's pick that up. I wonder what that uh, crossbow difference is. Light crossbow. Heavy crossbow, 1 to 10, 50 foot range, simple proficiency. Okay. Oh, got a better crossbow. With waiting. All according to plan. in here. Hey, Mata. How was your sleep? This box contains various household and hunting tools. This rubbish seems unlikely to be helpful in battle. Okay. There's some disgusting slush in this pot. Succeeded at lore nature check. This seems to be tar. All right. Ah. Oh. Here I am. And oh, that's disgusting. What you want? I wrote it like I saw it. Time's that's not cool. waiting. Awful. Ooh. A silver spoon. That'll help us in the fight. Silver spoon, we made it. That's it. Follow That's all we beans. needed. Potatoes? Oh, potatoes. Got anything In else? Due time. Nope. Okay. Can't go back there. Can we go inside? Can I camp? Cannot rest here. Oh, fuck. Amiri flexes her shoulders. Finally a fight. I was bored with all that talking. Well, these aren't the heroics I was hoping to write about, but I guess even the greatest heroes had to start somewhere. I see you're not easily ca cowed. I beg you, be careful. And please don't let Oleg do anything too risky. Svetlana, go hide inside. We're going to meet our guests. Okay. Hey. Okay. Um. Let's hit that guy. And...
Laps, dude. <laughs> Amiri murders people. I am prepared. Oh, that was. <sighs> Bring it on, boys. An identified item. Ooh, I want that. Composite bow. Now, do these fire faster? Okay, well, we're going to take all of that. And, hey, Oleg. <laughs> what up, dog? Oleg is breathing heavily, but he shakes his fist in the air menacingly. You rats got what you deserved. Now they'll know better than to treat honest people like cattle. And our Bakken here taught them a thing or two as well. Now, my lord, head on up to the guest rooms on the second floor. You deserve some rest after such a battle. I need to clean things up. And this is for your efforts. Now, don't offend me by trying to turn it down. Just take it. An honest fight deserves an honest reward. If that were more common practice in this world, I think life would be so much better. Oh, 100 coins. Nice. Can I we talk to this to dude? Do. All right. Okay, so this oil slick tar thing was just OP as shit. Half of them died walking in the gate. No mistakes. We do have to realign Focus on our the thing. Goal. Can we talk to her? Later, all right. Okay, cool. What's this? Oh, I don't think I want to. Okay, we're not going to. That is not far. Stuff. Time's not waiting. Um, chest locked. All right, we'll pick that shit. What troubles you? Applause, please. Bane. Gold trinket, gold statue. <sighs> Alright, it's locked. I feel bad. Anything. Is this one locked too? Oh no. That one's see okay. I don't feel bad about that one. Sorcerer, yeah. I know what to do. What's this? Monsters okay, I'll take that too. More books up here. What's this? Personal stash. Like anything is possible. What? Didn't even touch it. it just oh, fell. <laughs> oh god, that's terrifying. I didn't even hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe my game volume's too loud. All right, I'm taking all those. Whatever. I am prepared. Hmm. Fine. Everything. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's good. All right. So you wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out of the window, and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream, and then... Hear me. Please. Can you hear me? Please. The half-transparent outline of a beautiful nymph, appear nymph appears before you. Even in this ghostly form, it's clear that she's exhausted. Her shoulders are slouched, and her large blue eyes burn within her pale face. Her voice is barely more than a whisper as she reaches towards you. It seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. Okay. What do you want from me? Aid, salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. 
the one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. The Stag Lord is responsible for this fog. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. But while responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. Okay, how can I help you? The fog it enshrouds in tangled suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created. But my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house. And it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid That cat's there. like, fuck this. The fog hides this place from me. But I can point you to the bandit's camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again. And you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. Okay, so... There's an old house... The Staggler and the Druid were at the house. The Bandits camp near the Thorn Ford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything they can tell you how the fog was created. Okay. Beauty sure. Is so tender. It can so easily be crushed under the blows of cruel fate. But you can save it from being undone. Alright, I understand. Don't believe in fate, stranger. But our meeting seems more than a coincidence. Nymph's whispers fades as she disappears. Alright. Safe location. There are no threats in this location. It is a sort of headquarters where you can prepare your party for a new expedition. In such locations, companions don't follow you around and will go about their own business. You can speak with them freely to get to know them better. Once you exit this location and return to the global map, you'll be able to choose the co companions you wish to take with you, leaving the others here. Whenever you meet a new companion, but don't want to include them in your party right away, that companion will travel to this location on their own. Okay, cool. Um, oh, we leveled. We leveled. Sorcerer. Level two. Fuck, it doesn't help us that much. <laughs> Level up. Okay. God, do we... Oh, we didn't get anything here. Oh, we have two points over here. Okay, um... Oh, wow, that's cool. It shows us what other people in our party have for this. My God. Jeez, Lindsay's just a boss. She's literally plus everything. Like, I guess we'll do that. Never have more ranks in a skill than your total character level. Cr 
Create and detect forgeries, decipher writing, identify monsters, and recall knowledge about geography, history, people, and places. Like, might as well, right? Cool. Alright. So we just kind of made our character be really good at the things that we're really good at. Cool. I'm okay with that. I, I love that. I love how... Like, it's like you're playing D and D. You know, it's I have my, you know, I've got my sheets stuffed in between my player's manual. You know, like I actually do. The only thing I need now is a little button to pull up, it's like three by five cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they feel really good. So let's see, new abilities. Demoralize. One enemy creature within medium range. One round plus one round for every five by which you beat the DC. Standard action. You can use your persuasion for intimidation skill to cause an opponent to become shaken for a number of rounds. This shaken condition doesn't stack with other shaken conditions to make an affected creature frightened. The DC of this check is equal to 10 plus the target's hit dice plus the target's wisdom modifier. If you're successful, the target is shaken for one round. This duration increases by one for every five by which you beat the DC. So the DC is 10 plus the target's hit die plus the wisdom modifier? God, I feel like that could be pretty high. You can only threaten an opponent this way if it is within 30 feet. Um... You can clearly see in here you're using demoralize on the same creature only extends the duration it does not create a stronger fear condition okay so it's cool i feel like that's going to be super situational right right yep thank you appreciate it appreciate it get the right click and i like how it's a little sheet of paper awesome So, can I summon my, like, familiar thing? Ah, there you are. Perfect. And he'll just run around. Cool. As it should be. Z. Okay, guess we'll talk to her. A halfling girl with tousled hair, wearing a dusty traveler's outfit, sits chewing the tip of her quill. Just a moment. How should I put this? Oh, I know. She scribbles something quickly in a notebook, scrawled with verse. Raises her eyes and gives you a bright smile. Oh, hi. Um. Tell me about yourself. What do you want to know? Wow, this is going to be a lot. Where are you from? I'm from all over, haha. I've actually, I was actually born in Galt, in such a tiny village that it's not even on the maps. If it weren't for my teacher, I'd still be living there, milking goats, weeding turnips, swilling homebrew, having babies, and using books only as kindling. Who's your teacher? He's a true saint. He was once an important person in the capital at the Church of Sh Shellin. But he got in trouble with the authorities and went on a self-imposed exile to the tiniest, most godforsaken, priestless village he could find, the one where I was born. He wanted to open a school, but the villagers wouldn't let him. You can heal us all you like, but no putting any ideas in our children's heads. It'll only distract them from their work. But he did teach me on the sly. He taught me how to read, how to write, he, and he gave me books, poems, legends. He was the one who told me about the Ark Knights of Avastan, and when I told him I was going on a journey, he gave a magic ring so that Shellen would protect me from harm. That's really cool. How do you become a bard? When I realized there was nothing for me at home besides more radish patches, I decided to run away. A traveling book peddler, Tessie the Quill, happened across our village. Well, I stuck to her like a burr and wouldn't let go until she agreed to take me on an as an apprentice. Together we traveled everywhere, to Bravoy, to Taldar, and even Ust Ustalov. And then I found out about the Academy of Grand Arts in Patax, and I thought, well, I love reading stories, so I can surely learn to write them too. I enrolled on my first try, and they even gave me a scholarship. Then they expelled me, <laughs> but that's okay. 
they'd already taught me all the important stuff. And now, with Shellen's help, I can manage on my own. Do you worship Shellen? Yes, not to offend the other gods, but she's the most important of them all. All the other gods guard the world as it is, but only the Eternal Rose, the goddess of beauty, calls us to the world as it should be. Who are the Arknights? Oh, you haven't heard of them? How can you be a hero without knowing one of the most epic stories in the history of stories? They... No, I won't spoil anything. You should just read about them yourself. Every single chapter. Chapter. Their adventures are what gave me the idea of going on a heroic quest and writing about it to begin with. And now look at me. Here I am on a heroic quest. Why are you wearing clothes so messy? Lindsay waves her hand carelessly. I forget. Forget it. I can't waste money on looks. I'd rather buy books instead. In a hundred years, when people are reading my works, they aren't going to ask whether the author had holes in her sleeves. That's fair. Um. Alright, I have to go. Just don't leave without me, of course. I could just write whatever you tell me, but if I wanted to stay cooped up in a dusty room, I'd still be sleeping through lectures at the academy. Alright, cool, cool, cool. Svetlana Leviton. Good day. I hope you're feeling alright after the battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. What do you want to ask me? Svetlana lowers her head. God, my roommate was just murdering someone, I think. I just saw flashes of light from over there. I don't know if you guys could see those. <laughs> this is a very personal request, and maybe not important enough for your time. I'll completely understand if you say no, but the first time the Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring. Just tore it off my hand. It's just a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. I remember every moment of the day Oleg came to me, that ring in hand, to ask if I'd marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I'd misheard something, or that I'd say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. Svetlana interrupts herself, shaking her head guiltily. If you happen to find my ring among the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to rec 